Yeah, that's everybody. Morning, everybody. There we go. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to McKinley Memorial Presbyterian Church. I am Heidi Weatherford. I'm the pastor here, and it is wonderful to see all of you this morning. And those of you joining us online, we are glad to have you with us as well. Today's a communion Sunday, so if you're watching online. You may want to go ahead and, and grab something to eat and drink to participate with us during our time of communion. We always begin our service with a time of announcements. So if anybody has an announcement, I invite you to come forward. And as they're coming forward, I will uh, encourage you, if you see the maroon rectangular pad, it has a place where you can list your name and your address. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let us know if your email has changed or your street address has changed so we can keep our records up to date. And feel free to say hello to the people next to you and greet them if you are unfamiliar with them. Okay. Good morning. This is a Sunday where the youth um, usually sell our fair trade items or take orders. Gwen, I think, will be at the back table. We are ready to order some things. There's a few items there, but we'd like your opinions on what you want so we don't order things that people aren't interested in. So there's a list of the coffees, list of the candy bars, list of the teas, and a place if you want to say what you're interested in, then we'll make sure we order things that people actually want. Thanks. As Heidi mentioned, it's coming Sunday, and um, I just wanted to draw your attention that we don't make this uh, announcement every every month, but um, I wanted to make sure uh, this month that I made this announcement and draw your attention to the, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And right underneath that part of the bulletin in the order of service are all the ingredients for the communion bread. And also a note that the the liquid today, as always, is a non-alcoholic grape juice. The bread for communion is vegan and gluten-free, and the ingredients, if you have allergies, are listed. Um, the idea is that we believe that the Lord's table is an open table and that everyone is invited, and it should be uh, someplace that is safe and welcoming. So we want to try to accommodate people who have food allergies and gluten sensitivities, and that's the idea behind that. So if you have any uh, allergies to this, let me know, and I can try to adapt that uh, communion bread recipe. You can find this announcement in the bulletin, but um, the Outreach and Communications Committee has added something um, onto our website that's an accessibility feature that's a little nondescript person in the circle at the bottom left hand corner on the website. If you click on it, it gives you a ton of different ways that you can adapt the web website for seizures, ADHD, cognitive impairments, vision, motor issues to make the website more accessible for everyone. So just check it out, even if you don't think you'll use it. Um, and also thank you very much for all the newspaper. We are doing that service project today. So we will take a pause on the newspapers for a while and I'll let you know if we need them again in the future. Thanks. Good morning. If you're listening, my name is Margo Cheney. And um, on behalf of the Worship and Music Committee, I want to thank everyone who ordered and paid for our Easter flowers. Now wearing my hat as the buildings and grounds person, I want to say, if you want to take a plant home and you haven't yet, we have one still left in the foyer. 
this plant, and then we have four small daffodil plants where if you have a garden, you can put those plants in the ground, but they have lost their exuberant color, and they're in this little alcove. <laughs> so if you haven't claimed your plants and you want to, uh, please help yourself. If nobody claims them, I'm going to suggest that buildings and grounds plant them here somewhere where we have any space. I'd like to draw your attention to the back page of the bulletin, this big black rectangle. Several of us in McKinley uh, also sing in oratorial society, and so joining with chamber singers on Wednesday night, we're singing Andre Thomas's Gospel Mass, uh, which is fabulous. And it features uh, Andre Thomas, who wrote it, is directing it, is conducting it. Um, and the University of Illinois is playing, so that's a really excellent student orchestra. And the two soloists are Ashley Davis, who is the daughter of Ali Watts Davis, and Lorenzo Lance. And as you will see, even if you can't see this here, it's in Folger Great Hall, but because it's a student, it's through the community uh, of students, it's a very affordable concert. So come. Students, it's only $4. Um, and for others, you know, somewhere between that and 10 So uh, please come and celebrate us and have fun that night. It'll be fun. It'll be fun, short, less than an hour concert. Um, also, I understand there's a birthday today. Raise your hand if you have a birthday today or somewhere in the last week. Oh, Brandon. <laughs> We were waiting,
and please join me for the lighting of the Christ's candle. May this be our the truth of the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the And all of those who live in the shadows of our God. In Jesus' name, pray your prayer. Amen.
I invite you to join me in reading our first reading from the scriptures this morning, John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the religious authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As our God sent me, so I am sending you. Then he believed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas replied, Unless I see the nail marks in Jesus' hands, put my finger in the wounds left by those nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. Jesus said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hands to my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Do you believe because you see? Happy are those who don't see yet yet. The Contemporary Reading by Mary Oliver. I have refused to live locked in the orderly house of reasons and proofs. The world I live in and believe in is wider than that. And anyway, what's wrong with maybe? You wouldn't believe what once or twice I have seen. I'll just tell you this. Only if there are angels in your head will you ever possibly see one.
I invite you to turn to the prayer of the day, printed in your bulletin. You may join with me in the words that are printed in the bulletin. Emptier of tombs, you raised Jesus from the grave so all fears might be banished. So the locked doors of our hearts could be flung open. So our quivering lips could declare what we have seen and heard. Bright glory of God, as you stood in the middle of your friends on that first Easter night, come among us now in this time and place, showing us that death and sin no longer stand in the way of our life breath of peace. Strengthen us so we may stand with all who fear life. Take our hands in yours so we may serve all who are broken with grief. Inspire us to share the grace which has been breathed into our very souls. God in community, holy in one, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your goodwill go down. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have it done. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, Father. For the Lord's is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever the is all in one. May the peace of our God be with you. May the peace of God be with us all. I invite you to take a moment and to greet one another with a sign of God's peace. reading from scripture, Psalm 132, a song of the sense. Please join me. Behold, how very good and pleasant it is to be together for me. It's like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of your hair, running down over the collar of the room. It's like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord came to us, life for evermore. Good morning, Judge. In 1990, renowned gospel artist Richard Smallwood composed new music for this Psalm 116 fiction. So Richard Smallwood, the person who wrote Total Praise, the song that we do very, very famous, is one of his most famous piece. Smallwood likely learned of the earlier version from the spiritual, because there's a, a line hymn singing version of the song, and felt compelled to share his healing message 
His arrangement emphasizes the theme that God can heal our hurts. Smallwood humbly stated when asked about it, I take no credit for the work we do. Smallwood's arrangement did not gain great popularity until it was performed by the infamous Whitney Houston in and for the soundtrack of the 1996 classic, The Preacher's Wife. This was a modern remake of the 1947 classic, The Bishop's Wife. When the angel comes down, you better ask people, it goes to you know, black and white, it's that far back. <laughs> and Denzel Washington this time played the angel Dudley in the newest depiction. Smallwood's version of I love the Lord who heard my cry has been preserved and reinvigorated in the African American community. Our solo slit is Mrs. Jessica Ballard Wallace. <laughs> I will not be singing this like Whitney Houston.
for those who have been coming to church at the community for a while since I've been here, you may have noticed that I love to use poetry in the services. Um, and April was National Poetry Month. Here is one more poem, this one from Jane Kenyon. I am the blossom pressed in the book, found again after 200 years. I am the maker, the lover, and the keeper. When the young girl who stars sits down to a table, she will sit beside me. I am food on the prisoner's plate. I am water rushing to the wellhead, filling the pitcher until it spills. I am the patient gardener of the dry and weedy garden. I am the stone step, the latch, and the working hinge. I am the heart contracted by joy, the longest hair white before the rest. I am there in the midst of the basket of fruit presented in the window. I am the musk rose opening unattended, the fern on the boggy summit. I am the one whose love overcomes you, already with you, when you think to call my name. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our hearts, and may the actions of this day and throughout this week and throughout our lives be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen. In last week at the end of the Gospel of Mark, the Easter story ends with the women terrified and fleeing in fear. And this week in the Gospel of John, it, this particular reading, chapter, chapter 20, verse 19, begins with the disciples gathered in a meeting place in fear. Only this time they are afraid, well maybe the women were too, I don't know. But it says in John that the disciples were afraid of the religious authorities. Let's not misunderstand this. This passage sometimes is used to beat up Jewish people, but the disciples were Jewish, and Jesus was, was Jewish. What they were afraid of were the people who were religious authorities because they had been placed there by the Roman Empire. They were afraid of Rome. And they were afraid of the way the Roman government had corrupted their faith and they, did, they no longer trusted their leaders to take care of them, especially since they were following Jesus, who was a troublemaker and was countercultural and suggested that the way of the world was not the same as the way of God and challenged people on it, which is why he ultimately died. So they're gathered together in this space and they are afraid. They are afraid. The song writer writes to a people who experience fear of a different kind. They experience the fear of uncertainty and they experience the fear of aggression within their community and with neighboring communities. Sort of a tribal conflict, one that sadly still exists, I believe, in the area of Palestine and Israel today and throughout the Middle East. People with the same basic root, people with the same basic genetic codes, 
but different understandings of how life goes and different histories can't find a way to get along. And into that reality, the psalmist writes, Behold how good and pleasant it is when kindred dwell together in unity. Good, how good and pleasant it is. The word good, which in Hebrew is tov, is the same word used in Genesis when God created the world. He created the sun and the moon and the stars and the sky, and it was good. God created the animals and the plants and the birds, and it was good. God created human beings and called them good. Behold how good and pleasant it is when kindred dwell together in unity. And then the song writer goes on, and for us in the 20th century, in certain communities like mine, Eurocentric background community. It's like the oil being poured on Aaron's head, flowing down into his beard and on his collar. And of course, me with my background goes, you. But think about it. That area of, of the Middle East is in the summertime dry and parched. And people are nomads, they're living, there's no water. So that oil, after you've had your head exposed to the sun and your skin exposed to the sun, and your hair starts to get brittle because it hasn't had much nourishment, the oil is a balm. It's a soothing. It's not unlike my father in a few of the last days of his life. Because he had been living alone for so long, he hadn't been able to take care of his skin, especially his feet. And they were so itchy, and I finally, I pulled out lotion, and I rubbed his feet, and his cracked skin, and his dry skin, and his hands, and I thought, this is, this is like the oil poured on Aaron, soothing and calming and healing. Then the psalmist goes on to talk about the dews of Hiramon. If you don't know the geography, know this. Arid dry land. Jerusalem is in an arid area in the summertime, like I said before. It is hot. It is parched. It never rains. But there's a strange phenomenon. At least back then. I'm not sure if it still happens. One of you can look it up and let me know. The Mediterranean, the water evaporating in the air, creates not so much a dew, as a mist. And for some reason, geologically, that mist is attracted to the mountain, Mount Hermon, where it's so cold that it is able to condense and fall as snow and water, which then feeds tributaries that eventually reach the parched and arid land, providing water and nourishment for plants and animals and people. And God called that good. Behold how good and pleasant it is when kindred dwell together in unity, in peace. In the back to the story in the gospel, where everybody is hiding in their room, terrified. And I don't know if you've been scared in your life, but sometimes when I'm scared, I forget to breathe, I clench, my body gets clenchy, my muscles spasm. Somehow, mysteriously, into that room, Jesus arrives. 
further terrifying them, I'm sure. So his first words are, peace, 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 peace be to you. Peace in the Hebrew and in the Aramaic, which is also the, both of the roots for Arabic. Shalom, salam. And it has a connotation, not just calm down. It's not that kind of peace. Stop fighting. It's a connotation of wholeness and wellness, of fullness and completeness. Peace be with you. Peace, shalom. Behold how good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in peace. Shalom. Caring for the whole person and the land and all of God's creation. Jesus appears, peace be with you. And then he breathes the Holy Spirit. He breathes out the Spirit. One of my favorite things to do when I find a place where I can do it is to take a nap outside where I can feel the wind blowing. For some reason that is so refreshing to me. I grew up as a kid camping, so I have no trouble, you know, dogs, whatever. I want the wind. I want the smell of the air. I want that calmness, that peace, that wellness, that wholeness. And then, back to our gospel story, Thomas arrives. I've preached on this before, so I'm not going to go into this in detail, but you can ask me later if you like. Thomas gets a bad rap. Thomas just wants what the rest of those folks have already experienced. Let me say that again. Thomas only wants what the rest of the folks have already experienced. Thomas wants to see Jesus. They have gotten to see Jesus. When we get to Thomas in the story, a whole week has gone by. And then Jesus appears when Thomas is there with the disciples. And Jesus invites Thomas to come to him and touch him and know that Jesus is there, real, in that moment, so that Thomas can find comfort in that. Which reminds me of one of my favorite theologians, A.A. A. Milnes, who in the House on Pooh Corner wrote, this little phrase. Piglet sidled up to Pooh from behind. Pooh, he whispered. Yes, Piglet. Nothing, said Pooh, taking Piglet Pooh's paw. Nothing, said Piglet, taking Pooh's paw. I just wanted to be sure of you. I just wanted to be sure of you. Thomas just wanted to be sure of Jesus. Sometimes I reach out to my spouse because I want to know she's there. I just want to be sure. Jesus is there. And Thomas was sure. And then Jesus said, and this is for the rest of us, um, Blessed are those, he said, Thomas, you've seen me, now you believe. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Some folks in our Christian tradition have taken that to mean you have to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior in order to go to heaven and be saved. I don't think that's what that means. I think what that means is Jesus is saying to Thomas, there are so many who are never going to get a chance to see me, and they are still blessed. You don't have to see me. You don't have to experience that breath of heaven. You don't have to have a reality, a real tangible, touchable moment to be loved by me and to be 
brought into the kingdom, the realm of Shalom. You are blessed. Take heart. Because don't forget, Thomas is writing to a community of believers, most of whom have not seen Jesus. And so while he's reflecting what he sees or saw or somebody saw as a moment in time, the writer of John is also saying, but if you didn't get to experience this, God still loves you. You are still blessed. Thanks be to God for that. So, peace is that wholeness, that shalom. That breath is that refreshing wind that gives us rest and fills us with energy. Being able to touch one another. All good. All deeply loved and cherished by God, and cherish the good. To make shalom where we can. Where do you find that goodness, that good in the world? Where do you find your well-being, your peace, your shalom? Is it a breath? Is it the water that sustains and refreshes? Is it the oil that heals? Where do you find your good? Is it the touch, physical or just intellectual, reaching out? Wherever that is for you, claim it, embrace it, and then share it because we are stronger together and we are meant to live together in shalom. Behold how good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in peace. Amen. This is the table of God, of 
Jesus. It is not our table. It's not a bekindling table. Although many hands and hearts have set this table. But we do it because we are invited to come to this table and partake in God's love and share with one another God's goodness to taste and see that God is good. And so I invite you, no matter who you are, whether you feel worthy or not, that is not a, a point or a thing we consider, whether you feel you deserve it or not, you are here. We invite you to come. If you are a person who does not take communion, that is fine. But I will warn you, we're going to stand in a circle around the communion table, you know, by outside the pillar and around the piano and the front. And I hope everybody comes and joins us. Even if you don't want to take communion, you will not be alone. Others will be there who do not take communion. But standing in the circle for us represents our diversity, even as we are in communion and unity with one another. But the choice is yours, and we are glad that you are here no matter how you choose. I invite you to turn to your bulletin to the great prayer of thanksgiving. May the risen Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift your hearts to God, resurrection people. Lift our glad hearts to the one who gives us life. Children of God, sing with joy on this day of resurrection. Songs of joy flow from our very being on this day. How good and pleasant it was, joys God, when creation sprang forth. Great power to lead stars into the blue black skies. Precious goodness dripping down the mountains into the valleys. We were created in your image, your breath filling us with your spirit. But in the evening of that day, we fall sick and The journey away from the grace, your prophets have seen in great grace, declaring what they heard and saw. But we believe eternally in our family. Though the doors of our hearts are locked for fear you would condemn us, Jesus came into our midst with words of peace on his lips. So, with those from every time and every place with whom we hold faith in common, we sing your praises forever. Holy, holy, holy God of grace of the all creation praises your glorious name. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes joy in the Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, ordainer, ordainer of blessings, and gracious is your child, Jesus our Christ. Jesus came, showing us hands which were full of healing. Jesus lived to stand by our side when pain and anger assailed us. Jesus spoke proclaiming the good news of salvation for rebellious children. Jesus died facing death's shadows that we might walk in your light. Breathe on us, Spirit of God, as we gather around your table. Transform this simple bread into that gift of life which, broken, can make us whole once again. Sanctify this common cup that it, may, that it might become the grace for which we thirst in this and every moment. And when we have been nourished, may we go forth into the world, pushing aside the doors locked tight by the forces of prejudice and oppression, that all might receive your hope, that everyone might feel your breath, bringing them back to life. And when we have come to the end of our journey, when we gather with our kindred around the feast of wonder and grace you prepare, we, we will join our hearts and voices in singing your praises throughout all eternity. God, holy.
on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus was at the table with the disciples eating a meal. And then Jesus took the bread that was at the table and blessed it, giving thanks for it. And then Jesus broke it, saying, This is my body, which I give to you. Do this, remembering me. In the same way, he took the cup that was at the table and having given thanks, he poured it out saying, this is the cup of the covenant sealed with my blood. Every time you drink of this, every time you eat of this, you do so remembering me. And so we keep this feast and share this faith until Christ comes again and Christ does come again to us and again and again. I invite you to join us in the feast of God's people. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that Let us pray. Holy God, 
We are grateful for this supper that we shared in your spirit. Help us to hear your voice of calm, feel your breath of peace, receive your, your abundance in times of arid land and parched so that we're nurtured by the dew and the oil of your love. All this we pray in Jesus' name and by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Is the light of mine on the lake of shine? Is the light of mine on the lake of shine? Is the light of mine on the lake of shine? Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I live under a bushel, no, on the lake of shine. I live under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. I under a bushel no. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Now go in peace to serve and love God, love each other, and love the world around you. For it is all good. Amen. 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 You want some juice back there? There's orange juice or apple juice. And can you see things? Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's true. That's true too. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 
See if there's something you might order, let us know.
Can I turn off the lights? 